sucker for plot twists. A really good plot twist is the third point on the triangle where the other two points are the really good joke and the really good jump scare. In all three cases we're taken by surprise to pleasant effect that enhances the story, and in all three cases that effect is completely lost if we in any way see it coming. Especially jump scares. A good surprise jump scare gives me a shot of adrenaline and a sense of ooh you got me well played, but if I know a jump scare is coming I just feel really anxious and miserable. That's why I never got on with Five Nights at Freddy's. I suspect it might be lingering trauma from a childhood incident involving a beloved helium balloon and an unexpected stucco ceiling. Maybe this is biased of me to say, but I think plot twists in video games are all the more interesting because of the interactive element. We're a participant as well as an observer. All our decisions have been made under false information. The blood of all those poor bastards in Spec Ops The Line is on our hands too. Oh, yeah, I should probably drop a general spoiler warning before I talk about any more specifics. Hey, viewers! Yes, including you, the person who's not really listening because they put this on in the background while they water their crops in Stardew Valley. I'm going to spoil some video game plot twists in a bit. I'll make sure to clearly state the name of the game before I spoil it, but you've got to pay attention for that to work. Meet me halfway here. I promise your cauliflowers will be fine. So to talk about what separates a good twist from a bad twist, let's go straight to the top. My favourite plot twist in all of gaming. It's in Second Sight, an old PS2 game by developers Free Radical, best known for the Time Splitters series. In Second Sight we open with the old chestnut of our dude waking up with amnesia and psychic powers, and over the course of being on the run from some evil corporation or other we gradually learn what happened in numerous flashbacks of a military operation gone wrong. But something's off, reality keeps changing. We'll learn that character X is dead, then after the next flashback character X is suddenly alive again. At the end there's a moment when it seems all is lost and we are doomed to die, until the twist reveals the truth. What we thought were flashbacks were in fact the events of the present day, and what we thought was the present was a psychic prediction of the future. And so the day is saved as we can now prevent the plot's inciting incident before it even occurs. Certainly didn't see that coming. And yet it doesn't feel unearned, or like it came out of nowhere. Hell, in retrospect it's given away by the fucking title. What about a bad twist? Plenty to choose from, but most recently I've been replaying Beyond Good and Evil, and that's got a classic bad twist ending. At the final boss, main character Character Jade is informed that she's actually a super special alien baby, birthed or created in some unspecific way from the Lovecraftian being that is the hitherto unmentioned Big Baddie. This is a bad twist because it neither changes anything nor explains anything. Until the very final chapter, Jade never demonstrates any alien characteristic or skills beyond being able to smack things with a stick very hard, and she's never shown much interest in her own origins. She has been highly motivated to stop the actions of the villains this whole time, so there's no sense she might be tempted to switch sides. See, my two main criteria for a good plot twist are firstly that I mustn't see it coming, and secondly that it can't come out of nowhere either. It has to be something the rest of the plot has been building up to, a final puzzle piece that puts everything that's already happened in a new light. See, a really good twist means you get two stories for the price of one, because you can replay it and see how knowing the twist recontextualises everything that came before it. One of my favourite games with a plot recontextualising twist is of course Silent Hill 2. Hopefully if you've followed me for a while you've already played that game and know the story, and and if not, hopefully I can ruin it for you before Blooper Team does. In Silent Hill 2 we play James Sunderland, who comes to the titular haunted town after receiving a letter from his long dead wife, and descends into a tortuous odyssey through a surreal hellscape of violence and despair, which on first playthrough might not seem like it has any meaning behind it besides the standard horror setup of clueless every man gets victimised for going somewhere he shouldn't, but then you get to the twist, in which it's finally revealed that James's wife Mary isn't long dead, but rather quite recently dead, and he kills her, before having a psychotic break and stumbling to Silent Hill, and after that you can replay the game and realise that all the horror he's gone through has been his own subconscious mind screaming at him to remember what he did. That's why he's been seeing very distinctly feminine monsters being victimised all over the place by a big burly dude with a huge thrusting weapon between his legs. And I bring this up because the whole topic of plot twists in games came to mind while I was writing about Sonabi for my fully ramblematic yearly roundup video. Sonabi is a nice little pixel art platformer with an in-depth plot about a man who loses his daughter in a terrorist bombing and goes on a revenge rampage, in the process teaming up with a cheerful teenage girl in what felt like a pretty straight rip-off of the whole Last of Us dynamic, but the interesting entire plot recontextualising twist of Sanabi is that it turns out the girl we've been escorting is our daughter, and our memory of her death was false. Furthermore, we're actually a kill robot, implanted with the memories of a dead soldier that have been tweaked a bit to make us a more effective killer. It was unexpected and somewhat foreshadowed by various events in the plot, but at the same time it left a bad taste in my mouth. It felt cheap somehow, and I wondered why. Specifically, why the false memory twist in Silent Hill 2 works for me, but not this one. 
On reflection, what it comes down to is that there's a difference between unreliable narrator and the plot flat out lies to the audience. See, Sanabi's protagonist's false memories are shown to us as full on cutscenes. We literally see his daughter die in a bombing attack, and the fictional events leading to his revenge rampage, and we have no reason to doubt them because of the unspoken understanding in a third person game that we view things from the perspective of an omniscient overseer. The equivalent would be if Silent Hill 2 opened with a cutscene flat out showing Mary dying of natural causes in front of James, with a great big calendar on the wall declaring it to be three years ago. That doesn't happen. What happens is, the story about Mary dying three years ago is something we only ever hear from James's mouth in his opening monologue. It's James, rather than the game as a whole, that is lying to us, or more accurately, himself. At first we've no reason not to take his word for it, but over the course of the game there are many hints to the fact that James is a little bit off mentally. He's confused about certain details, he's weirdly fixated, he sticks his hand right down a toilet at one point without a moment's hesitation, and it's all those moments that are paid off when the full extent of his self-delusion is revealed. Lying to the audience, like in Sanabi and that one bit in Heavy Rain where we learn after the fact that a character we were controlling murdered someone during the time we were controlling them and the game deliberately didn't show us, smacks of a writer trying to make their twist impossible to predict, because it feels to them like some kind of victory over the audience. There's a word for authors who do that. Dickweeds. Who cares if someone might predict your precious twist? Speculating is half the fun. Let them have their moment of glory. Don't put your own ego above the value of the experience you're trying to create. So that's three rules for a good twist. Must be unexpected, must recontextualize the plot, and no lying to the audience. But there's got to be even more nuance to this, because thinking about it, all of these criteria are also met by the twist at the end of 12 minutes. It's undeniably effective, I just doubt that the intended effect was to make me hate the game's guts. Guess we'll have to tack on one more rule. Rule 4. No incest babies. 